we're going to take a look at this week's regional results because I want to find out how Legacy of Destruction affected the metagame. Mostly what happened with Tenpai. Do we need to respect Tenpai in deck building going forward? I assume the answer to that question is going to be yes. I believe Tenpai is going to be popular. I personally don't think it's the type of deck that I will be looking to play because it feels like the deck is very linear. Outside of the deck building aspect, which admittedly can be pretty big, but outside of the deck building part, it feels like you don't have a lot of agency over your games it's just like okay you let your opponent start you see what they are able to put up and you look at your hand and you're like okay well can that break it or can that not break it and that is something that i personally don't find super enjoyable but at the same time i think it's something that a lot of people are going to look forward to because there's a couple things that really really speak for tenpai to be a very popular deck because tenpai is incredibly budget is something you have to realize even with the whole trident dragon uh meme right it is i mean is it not don't look at pydra being 25 oh my god really i guess you were, you guys are saying it's 25 bucks in the us it's still expensive it's a magna mood situation yeah i can see that okay i'm not gonna call it a cheap deck i suppose but if you compare what you're getting if you look at your bang for your buck with tenpai compared to something like snake eyes even if Hydra is playset 40 bucks or something, and you have to pick up a Trident Dragon for like 70 or 80. What does that make comparatively to other stuff in the format and specifically Snake Eye? This deck is much more accessible and much easier to pilot. I think Enpai is going to go into this sort of category, kind of similar to certain decks like Fluanderies, where they are never going to be like the best deck in the format. Because as soon as they are, they just get hated to death, right? Fluanderese is also a deck that if it ever was the best deck in the format, it's so easy to counter, right? If people actually prepare for Fluanderese, it's never going to be that successful in the long run. And the same is true for Tenpai. If everyone is playing Tenpai, you're going to be able to beat it relatively easily. The advantage that these kind of decks have, right, is that people simply have to account for a lot of different decks in deck building. You can't just build your deck to beat Tenpai enter a tournament and then expect to do well because guess what you're not going to play against tenpai every single round and the same was also true for fluanderies as long as we have it in its current state and it, it's going to get even better at some point these decks are always going to see play it always has the chance to catch you off guard you always might find someone who doesn't have anything in their side deck for it because it's only a portion of the metagame and uh, it's relatively simple to play and compared to other stuff it's also going to be relatively budget and so tenpai dragon is going to be a force to be reckoned with no matter if you think it's a good deck or not right like i personally don't think i would ever play tenpai at an event because i personally feel like it doesn't give me enough agency over my games and i also think it's way too exploitable if someone has good cards against it in their side deck i might not have a chance from the get-go no matter like the difference in skill maybe between the two players so i personally don't think i would ever be inclined to really bring tenpai to an event and that's why i said tenpai is not going to be as good as people think it's going to be i still think that's true only because i don't think the deck is that good doesn't mean it can't be popular because the same was true for Fluanderese for a very long time. I never thought Fluanderese was actually a good deck, but it still was popular and performed, right? And because by sheer numbers, if enough people play a deck like that, it's still going to be relevant and it's going to have an impact on the format. I think that's what we're probably expecting with Tenpai. Like people are going to like this deck because it's simple and because it's cheap compared to other stuff and therefore we're gonna have to respect it because if you don't respect tenpai in your side deck then suddenly it becomes a really hard deck to face because the deck is really consistent at what it tries to do so if you don't have any answers to it then it's gonna be really bad for you i think it's probably gonna be smart to have a couple slots in your side deck dedicated for tenpai you definitely need a plan for it anyways let's see how tenpai performed in the first week after its release once again shout outs to super paludo for the spreadsheet first things first overall we see that snake eyes was obviously the deck with the most tops between snake eye and fire king snake eye we have um, a majority of the pie chart is there a pie somewhere there is a pie these are the two uh, most important graphics i suppose that we have to take a look at up here we have the overall breakdown of individual decks and down here we have the breakdown of decks that are using snake eye versus decks that are not using snake eye which come in at a whopping 42 percent of decks that are using snake eye in the top cuts whether you think that makes 
a deck tier zero or not i honestly don't feel like entertaining that discussion right now i don't think it matters there's no doubt that snake eye is the best deck at the moment legacy of destruction was never going to change that fact we knew that going in the set is not that impactful it has some good cards in it but nothing that's going to change the fact that snake eye is the best deck the infinite forbidden which is the next core set is a much more impactful set than legacy of destruction so when that comes out we might be talking some some other stuff but for now we knew going into this that it was always going to be snake eyes at the top but let's see what changed below we see voiceless voice in a solid third place i guess you could call it second place because it's just behind the snake eye decks right they finally got their recursive continuous spell that's the only real question i have about voiceless voice is do they play that card now my guess would be yes in the ocg most of the time people played that some people might even be playing the melodious engine which i haven't taken a much uh, detailed look at i've just seen that some people would use that in the ocg as well but for the most part it was just pure voiceless voice bunch of non-engine and now you can play one of the continuous spell that lets you recover your cards from the banished or is it also graveyard it definitely is banished that's definitely huge for the deck the deck already had a pretty good grind game but it could sometimes struggle with getting resources back when they were banished or sent to the graveyard for example the trap card when you use the effect to pop itself you had no way to retrieve it which was sometimes a big deal because you really wanted to pop but you wouldn't want to lose the card in the long run and now you can get it back the ritual summon during the opponent's turn can also help yes i think that's the less important part of the card but it is still good so i think it's understandable that people want to try the the new updated version of the deck and that the deck is also performing and then we have some unknown the deck wasn't reported and then we have tenpai dragon coming in after that tenpai dragon is uh not too far off from some of the other decks here in the pie chart like branded or cash i don't know if i want to call it coming out of the gate swinging honestly i feel like for a deck that was so heavily anticipated and theoretically has a pretty all right snake eye matchup i don't think this is that impressive the thing about tenpai i think this is exactly where tenpai wants to be and i don't think it can go much higher than this if people build their decks accordingly because what i said earlier still holds up like tenpai doesn't want to be up here because if tenpai ever puts up 15 percent 20 percent or something like that of numbers if there's ever a case where you play against tenpai three out of eight rounds or something people will legitimately start siding the stupidest cards against tenpai this deck loses to so many random cards you can have a heat wave all you want all you have to do is your opponent has to set like one vaboku or whatever so i personally think tenpai wants to be in this sort of fourth fifth sixth most represented spot and then it can perform literally almost the exact same situation as fluanderies in some of the previous formats when fluanderies was like somewhat okay during like sprite and tierlemon times right fluanderies would pop up every now and then it was it was dangerous but there were enough fluanderies to actually build your deck against it or your side deck against it during ishizu tier format fluanderies was like the second best deck but then people started playing zombie world and all that kind of stuff and that really hurt fluanderies so and the same is true for tenpai other than that i don't think there's anything super surprising here branded performing is expected cash tira performing is also somewhat expected labyrinth performing is expected especially after it got second at the ycs i'm sure people are willing to try that deck out some fluanderies which is a solid deck still still you bell is interesting got new support i wasn't expecting to see you bell before we get the new fusion but if there's a deck profile for you bell we can take a look at that i'd be interested in that we see some stun andes we see some pearlies with the second delicious memory we see rescue ace we see tier limits and some other stuff overall a pretty expected breakdown so let's just go and see if we have any interesting lists out here i said interesting list but we're gonna look at tenpai dragon first sorry that i said that but i do want to see what like a standard version of the deck might look like so this one is second place at regionals let's just take a quick look ah ah yes what well, we got here this is, the, this is the boy adam we did it bainbridge regional second ah. place tempai dragon one of the first in the tcgs to do it. Let me tell you something, okay? It's not gonna be the craziest deck list you've ever seen. It's probably <laughs> gonna confuse a lot of you out there. I put this deck list together the day before and I had some cards that weren't there at the time. So I kind of had to figure some stuff out, okay? But here, let's get started. A lot of people say the field spell is really good and it is really good. However, I was mainly using the field spell to bait out Ash 
out of my opponents because a lot of people will just hit this card thinking, oh, it gets you to engine, so let me ash it real quick. But most of the times, if I opened up field spell and quick play, I would just force the ash with the field spell or the ghost ogre or whatever and just go to battle phase and just kill them from there. Well, the thing is, that is true for some decks in the format right now, which is always annoying when that's the case. I personally hate playing ash when the situation is I'm always ashing stuff, just hoping they don't have the right extender. There is scenarios where you can ash certain choke points that are not easily replaceable if you get what i mean right and that's usually the formats where ash blossom is pretty good the formats where ash blossom just hits a card that can easily be replaced by another card and if they have that card then ash basically does nothing that's pretty bad and that's also why Ash is very mediocre against like Snake Eyes, right? Because Snake Eyes, most of the stuff that you Ash gets invalidated if they have another extender in hand. Like most of the time it feels like that, right? The issue is not with Ash or Imperm or Valor. The issue is more with one card combos, right? Because one card combos have that kind of property to it, right? Where like if you hand trap a one card combo, most of the time there's the possibility that they have an extender to push through that and still do the exact same thing, right? Right? And Tenpai Dragon to an extent is the same thing. Tenpai Dragon is also a one card combo deck. And this is where you really need to get to know Tenpai, I think. Let's say they activate the field spell and you have an Ash Blossom. What you have to know, if you let the search go through, do you die or do you not die? And then if you would die, if you don't Ash it, you just have to take the risk for them to have the extender anyways, right? You might have to just Ash it and hope they don't have one, right? That doesn't feel great. But the thing is, Tenpai is a deck that doesn't have that much engine, actually, at the moment moment i think to the point where sometimes ashing the field spell search and hoping they don't have the right normal summon or the the other spell it could be okay it's kind of like the do i ash alistair problem all over again right or do you ash sign at mining what if they already have circular or do you ash small worth it's always the problem with one card combos right do they already have it or do they not it doesn't feel great and that's why one card combos are very often frustrating to play against because all of those examples that i just mentioned are all potentially very frustrating scenarios because it feels like you just wasted a card and the opponent still gets to do the same combo anyways duster and lightning storms probably okay. the mvps of the so this is literally i think the biggest decision that you have to make in deck building for tenpai dragon <laughs> do you play 20 hand traps or do you play 20 board breakers most of the time from what i've seen in the ocg they did hand traps but i don't think that board breakers is out of the question especially in the tcg where baron and savage are banned i think it's okay i think if someone is playing the hand and drip version honestly i think it's risky if you let your opponent go omega twice on your hand if that's the version that they play simply because like i said earlier tenpai as of now doesn't have that many engine cards if they hit one of them then it might be jover they do both i feel like well yeah i mean with because the deck has so much room for non-engine you can also do a mix that's fine at the same time obviously the deck has prosperity so finding a board breaker with prosperity is much better than finding a hand trap and also if you don't play any hand traps the sixth card is always going to help you right it's either going to be engine or board breaker which is nice extra deck sp and striker this was my option again i didn't have the cards in time so i did not play the link climb package to kill my opponents with the uh, zelantis and and raging phoenix and promethean princess i didn't have those cards in time so i just didn't didn't do it um this was my alternative the fact that this deck can do that if it gets debarriered it's kind of funny but it's also disgusting you're supposed to barrier after the synchro i mean yes at the same time what if they lightning storm you then you have to call synchro right away it's not too unrealistic right not always happens but it can for sure plays into nip though yeah but like the thing is post side you're not gonna keep a nib against tenpai dragon i'll say it like this d barrier against tenpai dragon because there is a hypothetical way that they could still kill you with Zelantis. I think D-Barrier is not the best card against Tenpai Dragon. The problem is that most of the cards that are good against Tenpai Dragon are useless against everything else, right? Because there's like so many cards that are so specifically good only against Tenpai Dragon. So do you want to put some cards in your deck that are only good against Tenpai, but then are the best cards possible? Or do you want to use a generic card like D-Barrier that you can play in other matches too. In other matchups going first, you can bring Dimensional Barrier and beat Branded. You can bring the Black Goat and almost cite that against anything when you go first, really. That's going to be the question, right? The answer to that question is going to depend on how scared are you of Tenpai, which heavily depends on how popular is the deck, right?
it and how popular are like the ways to play through the barrier for example i think if tenpai is like so popular to the point that you expect to play against two or three in like a longer tournament then i could definitely see myself just putting the best cards against tenpai in my deck but if i'm only expecting to maybe play against one maximum two then i would be more inclined to play the cards that are like more generically good simul archfiends look solid versus both lines that card does sound good against tenpai but in which other matchup are you playing that it has the same issue if they duster you it doesn't do much wait does it i don't think that's true hold up wait this turn neither player can special summon monsters with the same card type they already control that doesn't lose to lightning storm you just activate it you don't have to call link or synchro this just applies to all the types at the same time that's why it's good but they don't have anything on board yet that doesn't matter for this card this is a lingering effect you can activate this when your opponent has no cards this does not mean the cards that they control when you activate this card at that moment that doesn't matter it doesn't check when you activate this card that would be currently control this says this turn neither player can special summon monsters with the same card type they already control this means for the rest of this turn while you have a synchro you can't summon a synchro while you have a link you can't summon a link while you have an exceed you can summon another exceed and that condition stays for the rest of the turn so if they lightning storm this you can just chain it is this good versus anything else though that's the question right i think it is good against snake eyes snake eye is like the link climbing deck right like snake eyes just can't link climb anymore if they make a charmer they can't make princess if they make princess they can't link it off against branded it also helps because if they summon albion they can't use the effect if they summon lubelion they can't use the effect it actually is quite good against branded as well i guess against pearly you could also side it no this could be a good middle ground card that is like strong enough against tenpai and safe enough against tenpai i'm not sure what the exact chance is but i would guess if you activate this card against tenpai unless you pass on a completely open board and have nothing you probably will not die the only question is do you really want to side deck a card for just going first but the answer is probably yeah doesn't it turn off yourself it applies to you as well yes like for example if you're playing snake eye and you have an ip mascarena you can't use it dryden dragon i made it once most people were scooping before i got to this point because <laughs> they kind of saw the combo and they're like oh yeah okay i'm dead so people have been asking the question of whether you have to play this card because obviously if you look at this deck literally everything in this deck is super super affordable outside of freaking pydra being an expensive super rare now but whatever except for trident dragon right and so people have been wondering do i need to play that card and i know nesh has been making a video claiming that you don't need to play it my personal opinion if you want to play the optimal version of tenpai dragons then you will want to play trident dragon because even if it doesn't come up in some theoretical lines, this card is theoretically way too powerful in this deck, especially if you play Prosperity. And even if it doesn't come up in some spreadsheet lines, in practice, in real Yu-Gi-Oh, there's a lot of stuff that doesn't happen like it happens on the spreadsheets. In practice, I think you're going to find yourself needing the Trident Dragon way more than anything else you could put into this slot. Because this deck already has a lot of flex spots in the extra deck. If there's something you really want to play, you can probably fit it. And Trident Dragon is just way too powerful for some situations when you're under pros, when your opponents throw some interruptions at you and you're not able to fully pull off your combos, your spreadsheet lines, then you need this card, right? But if you want to play Tenpai as a budget deck, and you can't afford the Trident Dragon, or you don't want to afford it because you think it's getting a reprint soon, you don't want to spend the money on it. You can play the deck without Trident Dragon. Is it optimal? No, I don't think it is. But is the deck still good enough without it to compete in tournaments? Absolutely. So if you want to play this as a budget deck, you can leave the Trident Dragon out. That's my take on Trident Dragon. It's not mandatory, but it's good. These are the other synchros that I played. One thing I want to look up right now is this Samurai Destroyer card, because I've been seeing seeing it but i actually don't know what it does it's a level seven synchro generic if this card battles an opponent's monsters your opponent cannot activate cards or effects until the end of the damage step also that monster has its effect negated if this face up card in its owner's control leaves the field because of an opponent's card effect you can target in the machine in your grave special summon it it deals with you bell oh 
Oh, okay. I see. Yeah, that could be a real reason. I mean, that's probably way more relevant in the OCG right now because Ubel, I think, is more popular there. But yeah, if there's like a random monster that you can't out for some reason because maybe it can't be destroyed by battle, then this helps. Okay, I see. Kill Skull Guardian too. That's true. This card never made it. This card never made it. That's the thing. I think Black Rose is good. I mean, a lot of these are probably mandatory, but I think you really underestimate how rarely you make these in the end. You will do them uh, a decent amount of the time, I think, in the long run. But for the most part, all of this is like cosmetic. The only thing that I'm missing here that I find interesting is that outside of Hieratic Seals, I don't see anything for going first. Well, you don't want to go first. Yeah, but that's why people are going to send you first after siding, right? Like there's different lines. I've seen people do Ancient Fairy Dragon into like, I think, Zolkin. And then you end on like Seals Crystal Wing, which is like acceptable for going first, right? But there's nothing here. The Zolkin line loses to a hand trap on AFD. Yeah, and this loses to no hand trap. Like, this does not make anything. <laughs> like, you make one seals. You die to everything. Most decks can't kill through seals plus hand traps. I mean, I guess. Is that really true, though? It depends, I guess. Snake Eyes can kill through that if you don't have the right hand traps. Snake Eyes either resolves their combo or it doesn't there's no like middle ground right if they play through your hand traps because they have the right cards for it then you just die can't use the battle phase to force out seals yeah but like it's not that big of a deal is it you just summon a flamberge and that needs to get seals and then the three shifters this was a piece of andrew's idea he really liked shifter not going second going first um, you just shifter um, on your turn in the pass and most of the time they can't do anything or they set up a mediocre board and then you kill well shifter is troll despair and cringe but i think it's probably decent here because one of the biggest problems for tenpai players if you win game one with tenpai drag do you just assume that your opponent is gonna make you go first and you take out a bunch of board breakers and put in floodgates like heat wave or whatever because if you do that if everyone sides heat wave and all that kind of stuff i might just go first because if they don't have their board breakers it's not as scary and i have the chance to just open a trap that immediately wins the game and so you never know as a tenpai player whether you actually will have to go first or not and so having cards that are good when you do either is valuable and shifter theoretically if you side it because you think they will make you start and then you draw it but they go first then it's still a good card it's still shifter and that's also one advantage of playing hand traps in general because hand traps work going first and second as opposed to board breakers sometimes if you decide to leave in your lightning storms in your main deck and then you get to go first then that card is completely useless right isn't tenpai the whole branded problem all over again if good then people will side for it's so bad kind of yeah the thing with tenpai is that that doesn't stop a deck from being playable right and the same is true for branded branded even if i haven't played branded in a tournament in a long time i never thought it was the best pick for a tournament it still is popular and it still is performing like it's not a bad deck and it really never has been a bad deck right it's always just a matter of well sometimes it gets countered and that feels bad and that's going to be the same with tenpai right i don't think it's going to be the best deck but it's going to be solid it's going to be like a little bit of an up and down right like will people over prepare for it then it's going to be not as good it will people prepare less for it then it's going to be have better spots i think it's the same with with branded and, and tenpai and flu and all these kind of decks so heat wave is another thing that people have been wondering about and i have good news for all the people that are very scared of having to pick up heat waves for whatever they are at right now like 15 or 20 bucks or whatever i personally think heat wave is a super super broken card if the standard is every time I lose a game to Tenpai, I make them go first. But once again, I don't think that that is necessarily always the case. I personally don't think if everyone is playing Heat Wave, I'm always making them go first. It depends on my side deck. And this is also what I would advise you guys to do. If you enter a tournament, if you basically are not well prepared for Tenpai because you don't think it's that popular or you need stuff for other matchups or whatever reason you have, then you should probably just let them go first and hope that they can't put up anything and hope they don't draw Heat Wave. But if your deck has a solid matchup against Tenpai because you are siding for it or because your deck is naturally okay against it, all that kind of stuff, then I suggest you at least consider just going first anyways. Because going first against Tenpai when they don't expect it, when they side in their heat waves and all that kind of stuff is actually kind of good, I think. Like that's one of the biggest exploits you can do is when your opponent sides in like a bunch of cards thinking they're going to go first and then they actually go second. Once again, I think this is a weakness of Tenpai is that it has exploits like that. And we play tested the mirror for hours the night before. It's kind of helped me get an idea. Um, and uh, that's pretty much that it. That sounds miserable. Play testing the mirror match. Anyways, I think Tenpai is 
an interesting deck. And hear me out. The list itself is not super interesting, but I think what it does for like deck building and deck construction for other decks and for the entire format, I think is kind of interesting, right? Because the whole situation is kind of new to Yu-Gi-Oh, which I find quite interesting to observe what's going to happen because... I literally can't think of a time in Yu-Gi-Oh where a blind second deck was as viable as it is now. I can think of like one format after the release of Evenly Matched at some point. There was like a time where blind second spiral was a thing. But like for the most part, 99% of the history of Yu-Gi-Oh, going second was not something that people would do. Oh no, Necroz was another format. Okay, I'm lowering it. You guys are right. I'm going down to 98. It's okay. Whatever, it is. whatever. 98. The point still stands. Henpai is the first deck in a very long time that's going to impact the game in a very interesting way because people are now going to have to consider what to do against it because it plays so differently. I think that's going to be an interesting uh, observation to make, right? What are people going to do against Tenpai? One approach is I'm just going to side deck cards that are good in multiple matchups, but are also good against Tenpai. Cards like Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, right? Which you can realistically side and get some other matchups, and it's also decent against Tenpai. Does it guarantee you win against Tenpai? No, it doesn't. Not the best card against Tenpai, but it's good. Mourner, also a solid card against Tenpai. Ash, solid card against Tenpai. Not great, but all cards that you can side in multiple matchups, right? Another thing that you can do if you're playing Snake Eyes, for example, or Pearly, is you can make the rank one Xyz, the Lirilusk that just can't die by battle, or Fucho, whatever. Those kind of things are things that people can do with very little investment into their deck to counter Tenpai. And then there's the other fraction of cards that are completely busted against Tenpai, but are not very good against the, the rest of the format. Like battle phase skips, you can play whatever kind of stuff you have that is just for Tenpai, but that murders the deck, right? Or you can choose to ignore it, which is also something that people have done in the past with flu. Like sometimes it was just not popular enough to respect the deck. You would just be like, yo, you know what? If it happens, it happens. And that's going to be interesting to observe what's going to happen with a blind second deck on everyone's mind like that. In terms terms of the impact of Tenpai, that's the first thing I wanted to talk about when it comes to Legacy of Destruction format, because I think it is still by far the biggest thing that comes out of Legacy of Destruction, even if it is the third or fourth most topping deck at the moment only, quote unquote. I think knowing how to respond to a situation like that is crucial, right?